Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Paul W. Smith. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And uh, here's what I can guarantee. You're about to have a great meal because we're at the Capitol Grill. And we want to thank the Capitol Grill team. Tim Wilkins, the managing partner. Lisa Banish, the special events and holiday parties. And each and every one of your servers and the chefs as well. So I can promise you a great meal right now. And I can promise you some great information from our very special guests. Please welcome... Lomas Brown and Sean Belegian. <laughs> now, if you're lucky, you hear them on Sports Wrap. Uh, and uh, this is kind of a behind the sports desk with our WJR Sports Wrap. And uh, it's because of the good folks at NECA, the National Electrical Contractors Association of Southeast Michigan. Uh, we thank the NECA Board of Directors. Tom Middlebrun, who is uh, walking around, just saw him a moment ago, uh, Executive Director of Southeastern Michigan, NECA, and Jason Head, Assistant Executive Director, Jennifer Mefford, there she is, perfect timing, Director of Business Development, and she organized this event and most of the fun events that NECA has. All the NECA staff, I saw Jamie Bohannik here, and, uh, and uh, we want to give them a, a round of applause, too, for making it possible and for inviting us all to be here. I couldn't be seated next to two better guys to talk about what we're going to talk about here right off the bat, Lomas Brown and Sean Belegian, and how about those Lions, boys? I mean, this is a, a wonderful time to talk about the Lions. Get us started with that, Lomas. Yeah, I mean, it's been great. This year has been just awesome. I mean, just, just to watch this team grow. Um, I started with uh, doing the radio broadcast. This is my sixth year doing it. And wow. of course, yeah, the first uh, five years, four years weren't very good. Um, the team struggled. But once they brought in Dan Campbell, Brad Holmes, uh, Chris Spielman, and that organization really changed. You could see the players that they started bringing in, the type of players that they wanted to bring in, which were players like almost like kind of like Dan Campbell, you know, players that have been counted out, tough-nosed guys, don't ask questions. You just tell them what to do, and they just do it. So you could just see that team grow, grow, and grow. And the great thing is that it's a lot of young guys getting a lot of great experience now. And so that leaves that window open for a long time for this team to have success. Paul, it really is like any successful business. It's, it's get the right people to get the right people. And I think it starts with Brad Holmes. You know, he knew a couple years ago this was going to be a team. It was going to take some time. And they were going to take their lumps, and they were going to struggle. But you know what? He loaded up on those draft picks. He's made those draft picks count. And let's look at the last draft. So many people, you know, all the general managers – out there in, in the uh, the sporting world thought, what's he doing taking Jameer Gibbs? What's he doing taking Sam Laporta? It's like putting a puzzle together. They were two perfect pieces to what they want to accomplish. And, and, you know, it's like that in the business world as well, finding the right people. It might not be the flashy person, but it's the right person. The Lions uh, have had the best fans in the world because we've all stood oh, by yeah. the Lions and been kicked in the gut <laughs> season after season. This appears not to be a season like that. How far can our Lions go? Well, I, so I'll put it this way. I'll, I'll tell you what my expectations were uh, before the season started. What I wanted was for the Lions to win the division, host the playoff game, and win that playoff game. Those were my expectations. Now, I know Brad Holmes. I know Dan Campbell. I know those guys sitting in those lockers right now. Their expectations probably far, far exceeds what mine were. But I'm telling you, that's what mine were coming into this season. Have they exceeded it? Yes, they have. They, they are playing great. And just to go back to what you said about the Lion fans, OMG. I'm talking about they are so awesome. I'm talking about how they travel, man. It's just been unbelievable to see when we go to opposing stadiums, how we just take over the stadiums after the games. And it's been that way almost each and every game. Baltimore, we had a lot of fans there, but we didn't give them anything to cheer about or hang around for, so they kind of left. But I'm telling you, those other victories we had on the road, Lion fans have been there. They have been, indeed. What do you think, uh, Sean, has been the biggest change for the Lions after all these years of struggling? I think culture. 
you know, the, the word is thrown around so easily, but I, I know Lomas can tell you this both as a player and I think as a broadcaster. I, I, I'm not telling any secrets when I say this. Uh, the last few years, it would hit November, and it was just toxic. Guys wanted out. Uh, you know, the, the season was over. We got nothing to play for, and guys were, uh, you know, hanging their heads. And Dan Campbell came in and and just went like that. He's got that optimism about him. I'm sure you guys all see what Dan Campbell is all about. And, and let me tell you this. Lo, I know you would attest. What you see is what you get with Dan Campbell. The guy that he portrays himself to be when the cameras are rolling is the guy that he portrays himself in, in front of his players. So, Paul, it's culture. I mean, it really – we aren't going to tolerate things that have gone on here in the past. And we aren't, we aren't going to wallow in our own misery. We aren't going to lay there and feel sorry for ourselves. We're going to pull ourselves up, get up, and, and be better. And, and it, I mean, one – through 53 with that roster, Lomas. And I think the whole thing can be said for the franchise as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you could just see it, and you could just kind of see the effects that Chris Spielman has had mm -hmm. on this organization. You just kind of see what Brad Holmes is doing, how he's always attacking the waiver wire, how they're never satisfied. They're always looking – to get this team better. You know, if it's somebody uh, on the practice squad that's playing well, they, they don't mind pulling that person up. If a guy's not playing well, they'll sit guys. They've set a couple of healthy scratches this year. They had guys where Dan said, you're not playing to the level that we expect you to play at, so you're not going to play. So that accountability is there where it might not have been there in the past. I got to just say, because it's the longest I've been sitting with you that we haven't brought this up since this all happened in Monday Night Football and the world uh, was introduced to you being inducted into the pride of the Lions. And I know how important and special and meaningful that is to you. Yeah, that was great. It was awesome. They, they took care of the big fella. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, they, t they took care of the big fella. They spoiled the big fella. And I told them, man, y'all keep spoiling me. You know how you feed a stray? And every time you turn around, that stray is back at the house. Told them that's how they're going to have me. But it was just, it was wonderful. And I think, like I was telling Sean on the show, the best part about it was all the alumni that came back. It was almost 100 alumni oh, wow. that came back for um, the weekend. And it was just great. Some guys I played with, some guys I didn't play with. But, you know, we all have that common bond that we did play with the Detroit Lions. So that's something that can never be taken away. So it was, uh, it was great getting with those guys. And, Paul, I, told, I also told Sean this. You know, the older you get, the better you were. <laughs> so, look, look, it was a play where I blocked two guys and beat Barry to the end zone. So, you know, and the next year there'll be three guys and I beat Barry to the end zone. Oh, so, it's great. You, Lomas. <laughs> Sean was, was just a fan for most of Lomas's career because of his age. But then that last year that you were here uh, was actually, Sean, your first year in the business. Uh, so, give us some of those memories as a fan, and then stepping into the business. It, it was so weird. I tell Lomas all the time, I, I had a streak of going to Thanksgiving Day games long mm -hmm. before I was even in the business. That was something my friends and I, when we turned 16, it was like, well, we're going to the Lions game. We're driving out to the Silverdome at the time. So to be able to cover the team, and, and I'm not saying this just because he's to the left of me, he was – one of the nicest human beings. The guy that you see here was the guy that he was in the locker room. If if you needed a good quote, you could go to Lomas. You could go to Herman Moore. Uh, when the Lions lost, you went over to the Miami side of the locker room because you got good <laughs> quotes from Benny Blades yeah. and, and Brett Perriman and everything. But, no, uh, Paul, to your point, it, it really was amazing because you put yourself in my position. These are guys that I grew up – rooting for every every Sunday and, and, and going to those Thanksgiving Day games. And then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm a kid with a microphone in front of them. And for them to treat me uh, as a professional uh, showed how professional they were. But it, 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 was, it was amazing. And that was a fun team, that 95 yeah. team. They really were. I mean, for people out there that don't remember, they started three and six. And, and then they got hot. They won seven straight games. And I thought to myself, oh, my goodness, we're the hottest team in the NFL. And then Lomas can plug his ears because yeah. I know he doesn't want to relive this. The guarantee. They went to Philadelphia and got trounced. Yes. And, um, but it was – I'll tell you what. It, I, it's something you never forget, um, you know, and having an opportunity to – 
talk to the the stars like Lomas and Herman and Barry when he chose to talk mm-hmm. to us. Um, it was it was a heck of a lot of fun. Lomas, you moved on from the Lions. You won a Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and we're very happy for you for that. Yeah. But more excited and thrilled that you chose to come back to Detroit. Why was that? Well, I mean, I, I love Michigan. I'm you know, So I'm from uh, Miami, born and raised down there. Most of my family's still in the Miami area, and they're in the Atlanta, you know, Georgia area too. Um, when I got to Michigan, so they dra- I got drafted here in 85. My first two years, I was out of here. I was like, oh, no, I'm out of here, man. The cold, you know, I couldn't deal with the snow. And then in 87, I decided, I said, let me stay here for all season just to see what it's like to be here and have been here ever since because there's just so much to do in Michigan, man. It's a, I, th- I think of Michigan as a tourist state. You know, most people don't look at it that way, but there's so much to do here. I mean, so much to do here, so, much, so many natural wonders here. And then I know <clears throat> because of the winter, you know, if you're not a winter person, they try to pack so much in the summer months, so it's always something going on downtown or festivals or whatever. So... That's what attracted me to the state of Michigan. And now I say I'm a Michigander. I turned in the Floridian um, residency. I'm a Michigander, all my kids, grandkids. Everybody's grounded here in my foundation. So this is home for us. And, and you know, I couldn't be happier. I love I, I it here. I think we probably couldn't be happier yeah. either. Yeah. We're too happy <laughs> to have you here, that's for sure. And, Shawnee, you've done radio, TV, pregame, postgame shows, Lions. You had a column talking football in the Detroit News. So give me your your helicopter view of the moments that stick out. You know, it, there are so many things. The 91 season was unbelievable. I wasn't in the business yet, but, you know, I've, I've told Lomas, that is something I think for all of us in this room um, – you, you you know exactly where you were when this moment happened, when they beat Dallas. I was in the Silverdome that day. To this day, I've never heard a, a building that loud. The pick six that game, uh, the scream that came, I mean, literally hurt your ears. And, mm. um, you know, since then, the, the unfortunately, the moments have been few and far between. But I think this goes back to what Lomas and, and you were talking about, Paul. Um this is the best fan base in the world, and I'll hear no argument because this team, let's be honest, hasn't given us a lot to cheer for, and we come back every. We single come back week. every season, every single week, and I, you know, I have friends. I think we all have friends. I have friends. Why do you do this to yourself? <laughs> what what what's wrong with you? Why do you do this to yourself? And uh, you know what? It's worth it. And to see the Lions at six and two right now and in first place, and be in the driver's seat, it, it, it makes you forget about so many of, of the dark moments. It really does. It, it's all worth it when the payoff comes. And I firmly believe the payoff is coming sooner rather than later. I, I do. It makes you forget about all those those moments. But the one thing that I can say, Paul, is, and, and I know you know this, um, the Thanksgiving Day game is part of our DNA. Mm. And every one of those Thanksgiving days, starting with – the great job that the parade company does and Tony Michaels does. And by the way, this guy's going to be a big part of it as one of the grand marshals this year, going down there and having that whole experience every year. That's a new experience for me every year. Mm -hmm. It's there's a newness to it every year. It's not the, Oh, been there, done that. This is my 40th or what? No, it's great. Every year there's something new. And, and, and I think that's what makes Detroit and this franchise such a special place. So, so Lomas, you work with this guy uh, every night. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about bringing back the original, the iconic sports rap on WJR that was here first and years ago, then went away. Sean brought it back. Lomas has joined him. But what, tell me about the transition to a – uh, not just an announcer, not just a color guy or play-by-play, whatever, but actually being a show host now. Yeah, it's it's different, you know. And what I do is do what I did when I was, you know, playing ball. You just lean on people. And when you have great talent like Sean is, you just kind of lean on them to help you. And that's what I've been doing. I mean, he's been great to me. He's been great in my transition uh, to doing it every night, you know, and being kind of like a co-host. Uh, the same when I started doing the um, football games with Dan Miller. I was telling Sean how great he was to me. And that's what you have to have. I mean, you have to have people that are willing 
to sacrifice and they're willing to help you um, because it's only for the betterment of the team. It's just, it's, you know, it's me and him. So, you know, I think me being better helps him, helps our team. Sure. Just helps the whole station. You know, we're blessed to have WJR as our station because they're wonderful, man. I, I'm like, I'm so happy I'm back with you guys. Well, we're so happy yeah, you're back. Yeah, I'm just yeah. so happy. I know we were with you guys when, I, when the Lions had you. Uh, had them a few years ago, and it was a wonderful relationship. Well, I think then. I like to say that uh, that time that the Lions spent with us was getting them ready to have a season. Okay, like so season. we got them ready. <laughs> All right, I like that. <laughs> but I, like I that. tell you, working with a guy like Sean Belegian, as I did, and uh, and working with Dan Miller, who is just a, a great guy, you picked a couple of great guys that yeah. would be great to help you uh, shine, and you do shine. And this is yet another uh, a bit of, of work that you're doing that you didn't start out to do. I don't know if you ever even dreamed of doing no, it. No, I didn't. No, you're right. And it's, it's just funny how the roads leave you, yep. lead you. I mean, I never thought I was going to be in Detroit, a Florida kid. Yeah. You know, never been to Michigan before, and then the Lions draft me up here. I mean, so it's a lot of things, you know, that the road leads you. You don't know why. You don't know why you're going down that road, but it's, it's a lot of times it's great at the end of that road. I got to say, Lomas, there's a lesson in that for all of us. We, we don't always get to follow the path we thought we were going to follow, mm -hmm. or maybe we get a curveball on a path we never thought yep. of doing. If you shut it down and say, this is horrible, this sucks, I hate this, well, that's what it's going to be. Yeah. But you obviously were open to any of those kinds of transitions, and, and it's always worked out well yeah. for you. So can I relate it? I relate it back to um, when I was in the league. So I got cut by the, the first time, my 15th year, got cut by the expansion Browns. You know, and they were an expansion team, so the Browns cut me. So just think what type of ego shot sure, that was sure. to me. You know, seven-time pro bowler, all this, you know, 15th year in the league, and the expansion team cuts you. So I was, like, devastated. So I remember driving back to Detroit from Cleveland, and I remember the phone ringing, and it was Coach Fossil from the Giants. And he was like, hey, Lomas, I want you to come – you know, play for us and stuff, really just comes to your team. I was so devastated. I told him, man, no, I think I'm going home. I'm done. This is my 15th year. I don't think I want to do that again. And he said, just come visit. Just that's it. Just no commitments. Come visit. Went to visit. And like I say, the rest was history. That was the first Super Bowl that I got to that year with the Giants. Of course, we lost it against the Ravens. Ray Lewis, that was the first Super Bowl he won. But if I wouldn't have did that, I would not have gotten to a Super Bowl. And then two years later, I was able to win the Super Bowl with Tampa Bay. So you're right. Sometime in your lowest points, man, when the bad things happen to you, it's setting you up for something better. And like I said, if I wouldn't have took that opportunity, you know, I would have never got to the Super Bowl. I could have said I played 15 years in this league and never got an opportunity to get to a Super Bowl. So it worked out. So just to your point. Well, it was your, it was your openness. It was your – uh, ability to say, okay, let's see. No. And uh, instead of shutting it down, I had 15 years, I got cut by an expansion team, I'm done. You didn't do that. And I don't think you've probably ever done that. Yeah. No, that's not in the DNA. Good. No. That's excellent. Sean, you brought back the iconic sports rap. Talk to us about that journey. And then, of course, then adding Lomas. Well, it, it was so cool, Paul. You know, when uh, the, the the boss said, hey, we, we'd like you to do sports rap. Uh, listen, I, I grew up listening to it. You know, I, I remember sitting in my room and, and, and listening to it and listening to games late at night, you know, with the pillow muffling the sound because I didn't want my mom and dad to know that I was staying up late to listen to this game or the other game. Um, true story, Paul. Um, so Lomas and I were chatting out at training camp this, this August when training camp was going on. And uh, Lomas, Lomas said to me, hey, you know, I, I, hear, I hear there's a chance that you and I might be doing a show. And I hadn't heard anything about it yet. <laughs> and and I, was, I was like, seriously? Yeah. And he was like, no, no, really. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to, to Steve Finitary, our boss, and this is great. So as soon as camp was over, this is a true story. Um, you can ask Steve. I literally jumped in my car, grabbed my phone, texted Steve and said, Please tell me there's a chance I can work with Lomas. Wait so, a second. Let's check. 
Steve Finitary, yeah, our boss yeah, at the radio yeah. station, is right oh, there. Yeah, Steve, yeah. is that how it happened? <laughs> that was it, it, so. You said it, I could ask Steve. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Hi, Steve. No, so I mean, really, it was it was that simple because it. My eyes lit up because he is. Um, I'm not trying to, you know, make him blush or anything. I mean, he is he is a treasure for us here. I mean, not only as a player, but as a human being and how he gives back to the community. And I know what a fun person he is. And I had a feeling if we did a show, it would be fun. And, and, and we're having a heck yeah, of a lot of yeah. fun. So, yeah. you know, you're, you're absolutely right, Paul. Um, I, I think there's um, – there's a responsibility when you do a show like Sport Trap, and and you know I think goodness that uh, and thank the good Lord that Steve had the wherewithal to say, let's do it big, let's get the big fellow himself. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun, and it's yeah. a great show. Sports Trap on WJR is back in a big way. We thank Nika for putting us together, but we also uh, thank them for giving us some time to take questions from you. Do not be shy because. We don't have a lot of time. I have to go to my regular job starting at noon to do my radio show. So if you have any questions whatsoever, I'd like you to raise your hand. We'll call on you and ask your question. And when else are you going to get a chance to do this? Hey, uh, with, with uh, you know, the Lions being as good as they are or really having us really just on the edge, how quickly will we get Montgomery back so we get that one-two between, you know, around how fast he is and getting that two- or three-yarder that uh, can really kind of – Take us over the edge. Yeah, no, we were talking about that yesterday, and finally it seems like the whole roster is going to be healthy. And I'm telling you, man, you're right. He was a key. I, and I've been telling Sean this for weeks uh, while he's been out. That's why the offense hadn't looked right these last few weeks is because of David Montgomery, man. He is the cog to that, that, that machine that makes it go. And I didn't know he was as good as he was – you know, watched him at while he was at Chicago going against us. Knew he was a tough runner, hard to bring down. But what shocked me when we got him was how good he was at making guys miss in tight spaces. And I was like, it, that's amazing to me, some of the things that he could do in tight spaces along with being a power runner. So I was telling Sean that, to me, he was he's a major piece that we need back. By week came at a perfect time. I mean, yeah. only two guys were limited in practice yesterday. That's incredible. Yeah. So, so for them to get healthy at this juncture of the season, you're right. That's huge, huge. Now the gentleman over here. Lomas, thanks for coming out, and everybody, thanks for coming out. Uh, Follow-up question from a couple of weeks ago. It's kind of a fun question, Lomas. I'm going to put you on the spot. You were going to uh -oh. find out who was authorized to have a communication piece in their helmets. Oh, right? yes. Did you find that out yes, for us? Yes, I did. So, yeah, so it is. So I'm glad you asked me that, yeah. So it does work just like the quarterback. Uh, he asked me about were, – were we together? Or I don't think we no, were. I don't think nobody else. He asked me about the green dot on the back of the helmets. You know, the quarterbacks have the green dot where they could talk to them. The offensive coordinator could talk to them, you know, call plays into a certain amount of time. Well, it's the same on the defensive side of the ball. The middle linebacker, Alex Anzalone, he has the green dot too, and Aaron – Aaron Glenn is able to do the same things because I didn't realize that either until you asked me, went back and found out. So it's the same thing. They get, I think it's 12 seconds or it's a certain time in the, the uh, play clock when it just automatically cut off so they can't keep communicating with them so they can't get an unfair advantage. So, yeah, that's the answer to it. Yeah, I'm glad you asked me that. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. That's yeah. a good question. Yeah. yeah. Anybody yeah. else with a question? Don't be shy. You won't get an opportunity like this very often. Yes, sir? I often hear people talk about Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell, but you very rarely hear people talk about Sheila Ford. Mm -hmm. And when you look at, at the Lions for pretty much my lifetime, there's never been a Ford that has got it right uh, when hiring people. We could talk about <laughs> casualties for till 8 o'clock tonight. She got it right the first time. Tell me what she's done in that in that uh, organization and how she changed it so quickly. I want to start first. She she cares. I mean, you you can see it. I think the the famous picture on the cover of the Detroit News after that debacle on Thanksgiving Day, um, where where she had her hands like literally her hands covering her face. I mean, she was. I think disgusted is a fair way to say it. And and what she came out and said, she put into action. 
because it's one thing to talk. And, and unfortunately, this is a franchise that, whether it be a coach, a general manager, has done so much talking over the past. It's one thing to talk, but it's then another thing to go out and get it. And she went out and got Dan, and she went out and got Brad. And let's face it, low. Mm -hmm. a lot of people said, well, no, you hire the general manager first and then let the general manager do the shopping and pick the guy that he wants. I'd say that it worked out fairly well doing it the way that she did it. Um, she she wasn't going to tolerate mediocrity anymore, and uh, yeah. we're reaping the benefits of it right now. Well, we are, yeah. and, and let's face it, all the fans at one point or another blame the Ford family. They, they said, oh, they we're never going to have a winning team while the Fords still own the team. Mm -hmm. I hope they'll sell the team. Clearly, she's broken that curse. So, so I'll, and then I'll go one step further. I'll say that you can even get Martha for a mm -hmm. lot of credit, too, because I'm telling you, a prime example, and not to throw shade, a prime example was when we used to be um, over at the practice facility. So when Mr. Ford owned the team and he was alive over at Allen Park, it was a balcony up there where Mr. Ford used to watch practice from. You know, outdoor balcony, you could watch practice from out there. When when Martha Ford took over, on the field, she was on. And I'm talking <laughs> about she was moving from drill to drill. So you doing one on one right here? She's standing there watching it. They got another drill going over there. She walks over there, or Elton drives her over there. She's watching that drill. That's what Sheila's doing. Sheila, been, she's been doing that. And when you have an owner that's down there that's doing that, not only does the owner care, you know the owner, but it permeates throughout the team. Players. Because they see yeah. this. And believe me, as a player, you're going to practice good if the owner's <laughs> standing there. You ain't going to be lollygagging and practice with the owner standing right there on the sideline. So it's so many things to the owner being visible you know, not only to the players, but visible to that organization. And that's what I give Mrs. Ford credit to. She was doing that, and you're seeing Sheila Hemp doing the same thing. All right. We want to thank our guests here and behind the sports desk with WJR Sports Wrap. Uh, let's, uh, let's give a round of applause to Lomas Brown and Sean Belegian. Thank you.